It's 2019. A player named Cheapshot receives a seemingly innocent email from Mojang. But what would happen next would leave him in the middle of one of the greatest account heists Minecraft has ever seen. So why was Cheapshot a target in the first place? And how far did this heist truly go? To answer this, we need to go all the way back to September of 2013 where the Mojang team are all in Japan hosting a dinner party in Tokyo, inviting players to hang out and ask questions about the game. But there was a slight problem. The Japanese players who had all turned up were stuck speaking Japanese, with the Mojang team keen to answer questions but only able to in English. They were in a pretty awkward spot. But this would all change once Cheapshot arrived, as he was able to speak both English and Japanese, offering to translate for the entire night. And with the Mojang team accepting, Cheapshot would semi-joke with who he believed to be Jeb's girlfriend at the time, asking if he would be able to get a cape for helping out. And to his surprise, she reached for her diary, explaining that it probably wouldn't be an issue, and scribbling a note to herself that once the team had got back to Sweden, she'd ask Jeb. And so months would fly by, until one day, totally out the blue, Cheapshot would randomly log on to discover a custom one of one cape, containing the Japanese flag on the inner side. It had happened, his joke had become a reality, and he was stoked to have something so special from what was unknowingly just the start of Minecraft's great success. And when sharing it with the Minecraft community, players were more than happy to see a new cape added. But this cape would come at a cost, as despite the memories Cheapshot held close, hackers throughout time would try getting closer and closer to his rare cape, forcing him to repeatedly change his password, so much so that over time, he'd rely on trustful contacts deep within Mojang to protect him. Because after all, nothing would go wrong if he only trusted Mojang. Or at least, that's what he thought, as one day in October, Cheapshot would receive an email from Mojang, asking him for his account details, warning him they couldn't go into much detail, but his account risked being permanently deleted if he didn't. This felt odd for Cheapshot, but considering hackers were constantly trying to steal his account, he wasn't surprised at all, yet slightly suspicious, because the email that Mojang had sent him had a seriously obvious spelling mistake, Bibin, which he'd point out in his response, alongside the fact he'd log in once more to change his password. But little did he know, this wouldn't be of any use, because this wasn't Mojang at all. And the only reason Cheapshot hadn't realized sooner was that his email client had shortened the fake email address. This email was support at mojang.cam, a website that had been purchased by a proficient teenage hacker named Velma, an active member of the original Minecraft username community, or for short, the OG Com, a place where members are excited to show off their cool capes, usernames, and trade accounts underneath the table to avoid Mojang's terms of service. This is all usually done particularly peacefully. However, no matter how friendly this place can be, there's a darker side to this community, where cybercriminals use Minecraft accounts as means to launder money that they can't spend elsewhere. And where the rarer the accounts you own, the higher your reputation and status grows amongst the thieves. So for Velma, buying the website Mojang.cam was clearly the golden goose, allowing him to create an email address almost identical to the real Mojang support email. And by continuing to impersonate Mojang by sending out emails he'd found through leaked databases, it increased his chances of swiping heavily targeted and ultra rare Minecraft accounts. This method of hacking is called social engineering, and the results heavily depend on how capable the hacker is to be able to trick you. And Velma clearly knew what he was doing, bringing us right back to Cheapshot, who now wasn't just about to be fished into this craziness, but accidentally helping out the hacker with a spelling mistake in the process. But Cheapshot doesn't have to be the only one helping out, because if you're new here, you can help me out by subscribing with notifications on, as I would hate for you to miss out on any future videos. Alright, back to the heist. So as quickly as Cheapshot would send his reply, a new email would appear, with Mojang.cam doubling down and insisting he hand over his account details if he ever wanted to recover his now blocked Minecraft login. So Cheapshot gave in, sending his details out into the unknown, trusting that his memories and his cape would be completely safe with Mojang. Now, this of course wasn't true at all, because Cheapshot's account was now in the hands of Mojang.cam. And Velma wasn't stopping here. He'd continue targeting high-profile accounts, trying his luck aggressively, making it extremely easy to imagine other unique cape owners becoming targets, such as Mr. Messiah, the owner of the Ace of Spades cape, and Billy K, the owner of the Turtle cape, were probably sent emails too, that luckily, and most likely, ended in their spam folders. With that being said, Cheapshot would start receiving messages in a different type of inbox from members of Blockmania, a Minecraft server that is partnered with a website that tracks Minecraft usernames and capes. And they'd caught on that his account was definitely on the move. So Cheapshot checked for himself, failing to log in and quickly realizing the mistake that he'd made. He really had been hacked. And so he jumped into action instantly, teaming up with Mojang support and the contacts he knew to get his account back. But this wasn't about to be easy, as Cheapshot had really given the hacker the upper hand here, as one of the details that he'd given through email was the transaction ID, or for short, the TID, which when leaked, leaves your account to never be secure again. This is because the TID is given to each and every one of us once we purchase the game. 
Think of it as a receipt, acting as proof of ownership to the account and copy of the game, which if hackers have access to, allows them to continuously regain access and even change the email address the account is linked to. Meaning this chase truly had a time limit. If Cheapshot's account wasn't recovered soon enough, it would only get tougher from here. So, whilst Cheapshot and Mojang support were working hard on recovering the account, it's speculated Velma would go on to share the account details with ridiculous and countless amounts of other bad actors, getting to a point where the account could have very well been sold to the highest bidder for pure bragging rights at a valuation of ten to thirty thousand dollars. Now, these numbers seem absurd, especially when knowing that the buyer would fully go into this purchase, understanding that their time with the account would be limited. Yet, yeah, this wouldn't stop them, and money for Velma wouldn't stop flowing either, because Mojang.com would hit yet again, and this time, it was ridiculous. You see, he'd managed to gain access to Persian Cat and Persian Golf, two accounts meaning serious business, known in the OG username community as Hexacape accounts, due to them having every single Minecon cape available. But for these two accounts, it wasn't even the craziest part, because among the Minecon capes, Persian Golf held a Mojang Classic cape, and Persian Cat, well, it held what's known as a Mojang cave, which only meant one thing. This very heist had managed to hack a Mojang employee, bringing the rough estimation for each account close to $30,000 each. And by being generous about the estimations on accounts we don't know, Mojang.com could have very well been the very first $100,000 Minecraft heist. So what about Cheap Shot? Well, Mojang support were doing their best to get the account recovered as soon as possible, and it was clear they were making sharp progress, with it only being a matter of time before they tracked down fully and regained the account. So Cheap Shot, with full confidence in Mojang support, headed off to bed, and the Mojang support team clocked on. And by the 29th of October, mid-afternoon, exactly 24 hours after Cheap Shot's account was first stolen, Mojang staff had successfully recovered his account. But yet things had slightly changed. You see, since the details of Cheapshot's account had been sent out to such a large range of unknown hijackers and abused so widely in such a short period of time, Mojang was forced to regenerate an entirely new transaction ID for the account's future security, an action that according to some in the Minecraft username community is unheard of, can only be done by certain Mojang support members and possibly a one-off action that has never been taken before or since Mojang.cam. So you might be thinking, despite losing Cheap Shot's account, what happened to the others? Did Velma really get away with Mojang employee accounts and over 10 capes collectively? Well, for Velma, it really seemed like the accounts weren't going anywhere anytime soon, even though he knew that he'd never have it forever. But as long as he'd gained bragging rights and potentially some real dollars, it was a win. But as all and every great heist that has ever taken place, nothing is final. And this too was all about to quickly change because Mojang's support was quickly catching up. The reports were coming through and they continued to close in on Mojang.cam. And with Velma knowing it was only a matter of time, he would push on. Until February of 2020, five months after Cheapshot's account had been hacked, Mojang had finally caught up, with every single cape on Persian Golf's account being picked off, removed, and locked. Alongside Persian Cat keeping its capes but eventually being locked and lost too, the Mojang.cam heist was clearly falling apart coming to an end with whatever was left over remaining a mystery. And even though Cheapshot's account was back in his pocket, Velma was to never be seen again, disappearing into the void that we all know as the internet, leaving the Mojang.cam heist to finally drop silent.